Hi guys, uh, College Algebra Math 1513. We're at Northern Oklahoma College. This is Chapter 2, Section 5 in the College Algebra book. And we're going to graph functions uh, using translations, reflections, stretching, and compressing, using those properties to graph a function. All right, the uh, first thing I'm going to show you is how to find a cool online graphing calculator. Now, in another lesson, I showed you the cool math graphing calculator, which is right there. On this one here, notice I've just uh, Googled free online graphing calculator. This time I'm going to pick the Holt uh, calculator, this first one that shows up, hrw.com. I'm going to use it this time. All right, I'm going to start with a simple function like x squared and graph it. There's my simple function x squared. We're going to call this the original function. This is the function that we're going to start with every time for this lesson and now I'm going to put it through a series of translations that means I'm going to slide it left or right or up or down I'm also going to put it through some reflections which means I'm going to flip it over the x-axis or flip it over the y-axis and I'm also going to compress it and stretch it compress it means I'm going to like squash it down flatter so it opens up wider and flatter or I'm going to stretch it that's like I grab it and pull it up and stretch it taller and skinnier All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my second graph, my green graph, and I'm going to go x squared. That's my basic parent function. We call it parent, like your parents, your mom and dad. That's our parent function. And I'm going to, uh, let's add 5 to it and hit graph. Watch what happens. Okay, the red is my parent graph. That's my original graph. What happened when I added 5? It shifted the whole graph up 5 units. Didn't change the shape of the graph. It just shifted the whole graph up 5 units. And what if I uh, subtract 5? Watch what happens. Graph. There's the parent. That's the one that shifted up. And the blue one is the one that shifted down. So our blue graph, by, sh by subtracting 5 on the end out there, shifts the graph down 5 units. So what we've learned here is this is called a vertical translation. It shifts it up or down. If you add a number on the end, it'll shift it up that many steps. And if you subtract a number on the end, It'll shift it down that many steps. All right, the next thing I want to graph is I want to graph a uh, horizontal translation. That means I'm going to shift my parent graph, my red graph, left or right. Now, how do I do that? What I do is I add or subtract a number before I square it, okay, inside the parentheses. So I'm going to uh, subtract 5 inside the parentheses, and then I'm going to square it. So watch what happens. Remember, the red is my parent graph, and the green is the graph after I've subtracted 5 inside, or before squaring. So graph, there's the parent graph. And what happened to the green graph? It shifted over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units to the right. Now that's kind of counterintuitive. You would think that subtracting 5 would move the graph 5 steps in the negative direction, but it actually doesn't work that way. Subtracting 5 before you square it, or subtracting 5 inside the parentheses, actually moves the graph to the right. So common sense tells us that x plus 5, and then square it. We think that's going to shift the graph 5 to the right, but actually it shifted the graph. That's my blue graph. It shifted the graph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units to the left. So these are horizontal translations. So if you add or subtract a number inside the parentheses or before you square it, it's going to be a horizontal translation and shift it left or right. All right, for my next example, I need a, a better parent graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my x squared graph. I'm going to move it uh, up into this quadrant number one here so that you can watch it flip over the x-axis and flip over the y-axis. This is called a reflection. We're getting ready to reflect it. So first of all, I'm going to, inside the parentheses, I'm going to move it five steps to the right. That means I have to minus five inside the parentheses. Now I'm also going to shift it up because I don't want it sitting on the x-axis. So I'm going to shift it up a couple units. I'm going to shift it up like three units. So I'm going to raise it three units. You see those two translations we did? The minus five inside the parentheses shifts the graph to the right, and the plus three outside here on the end moves the whole graph or translates the whole graph up three steps. So let's watch it now. All right, so my parent graph was right here going through the origin, and I shifted it five steps to the right, 
and three steps up. One, two, three. So that's my new parent graph. I'm going to call this my parent graph now because it'll show the, the reflection better. All right, I've copied my parent graph. My red graph is my parent graph. I've copied it into my green slot here. And what I want to show you is what happens if I put a negative in front of the whole function? What's that going to do? So I graph it here. There's my parent graph. And what did it do? It uh, flipped the graph so it points the other way. Okay, actually that wasn't a very good picture. So I went back to my function and I put another set of parentheses around the whole function because I wanted that negative to affect the whole function. All right. As it was, it was just affecting the x minus 5 part. Anyway, I put an additional set of parentheses around the whole function. I put a negative in front of it. And this is a much better picture of a uh, uh, reflection about the x-axis. So here's my parent graph, my red graph. And I flipped it over the x-axis. Here's the x-axis. I flipped it over the x-axis. That's called a reflection. So just like you look in the mirror and you see a reflection of your face, this reflects over the x-axis, and we see the exact same graph, but everything's kind of backwards. Like when you look in the mirror, your left eye is really your right eye, and what looks like your right eye in the mirror is really your left eye. Same thing here. This reflection, it was opening up, but by reflecting it over the x-axis, now everything's backwards and it opens down. So that's a reflection over the x-axis. You just reverse the sign in front of the whole function. All right, now I'm going to do a horizontal translation. I'm going to flip this red graph, this parent graph, across the y-axis and make it land over here. So it's going to pick up, it's going to flip, and land right over here. Now, how do I do that? Uh, this is going to be my blue graph. I'm going to take off that negative because I don't want it to flip upside down. And I don't need that extra set of parentheses anymore because I'm going to squeeze the negative inside the parentheses. I'm going to put a negative right in front of the x inside the parentheses and watch what happens. All right, there's my parent graph, my original red graph. Here's my green graph. When I put a negative in front of the whole function, it flipped it over the x-axis. Okay, that's a reflection over the x-axis. But on my blue graph, when I put a negative inside the parentheses in front of the x, that's going to be a reflection over the y-axis, the parent graph, the red graph. I picked it up, I flipped it over the y-axis, and it landed in the exact same spot but on the other side of the y-axis. So putting a negative in front of the whole function flips it over the x-axis. That's a reflection over the x. Putting a negative inside the parentheses and in front of the x flips it over the y-axis. That's a reflection over the y. OK, the last thing I'm going to show you is uh, how a graph stretches or compresses. Let's start with stretching. If I take my parent graph x squared and I put a let's say a 2 in front of it. Okay, let's watch what happens. There's my parent graph, and there's my green graph. I put a 2 in front of it, and look what happened. It got a little skinnier, okay? It's been stretched. Just imagine grabbing it here and here and pulling it upwards like a rubber band. You're stretching it. It's becoming taller and skinnier and narrow, narrower. What if I did 4x squared and graphed it? See how it gets skinnier and skinnier and skinnier? That's called stretching a graph. So here's my parent graph, my red graph. Then I stretched it by a factor of 2 and got my green graph, and stretched it by a factor of 4 and got my blue graph. Let's look at the table. Here's the table over here of my x squared function, my parent function. And for example, let's look at the coordinate 2. 2 produced a 4. 2 was my x and 4 was my y on my parent graph. If I switch to my green function, I just click on the green function, and now my table over here says 2 on the x produced 8 on the y. What happened to my y? It used to be a 4 on the parent graph. Now it's an 8. All right, it's 2 times bigger because we multiplied it by a factor of 2. What about on my blue graph? Here's my table now. I have a 2 for my x, and this time it produced a 16. That used to be a 4, now it's a 16. Why? Because I multiplied the function by 4. I made it skinnier by a factor of 4. So see how the graph changed. It was 2, 4 was my parent graph. And then green stretched it to 2, 8 because it multiplied the y by 2. And then blue stretched it to 2, 16 because it multiplied the y by 4. And the y just got taller and taller and skinnier and skinnier.
All right, finally, let's do a compression. There's my original x squared graph. And I'm going to take my x squared, my parent graph, but in front of it, I'm going to put a fraction, a number less than one. Um, let's put in how about one uh, half. That'll be easy. And then close my parentheses and graph it. So what happens to it? Whoops, I lost it. Let me find it. Okay, here I found it. I guess I don't need the parentheses on this. So I just put in one half, and I use this little division bar here. One half x squared, and I came up with my green graph. Now notice, here's my red graph, my parent graph. Notice how the green graph, we call it compressing. It's kind of like you put your hand on top of it and kind of squashed it down. You squashed it flatter. Let's make it even flatter. What if I do a one-fourth x squared? See how it gets flatter and flatter and flatter? My red graph is my parent graph. Then my green got flatter by a factor of one half. And my blue got fatter by a factor of a quarter. It's getting smaller and smaller, flatter and flatter. It's almost like you're squashing it down. That's called compressing the graph. Look at your y's again. Look at your x's and y's. Let's look at the coordinate 2, 4. That's on my parent graph. On the green graph, it becomes 2, 2 because I took, I made, I used to be a four and I took half of it and now it's a two. And look at my blue graph. It's two, one. It used to be two, four. That's because I took one fourth of the four and it became one. I basically divided it by four. So putting a fraction in front of your function makes the function flatter. It compresses it. Okay, here's a quick summary of what we just talked about. Uh, y equals f of x, we're going to call that our parent graph. That's the graph we start with. And everything that happens to our parent graph is called a translation or a reflection or a stretching or a compression. Now our first uh, function is y equals f of x plus 3. What's this do? It moves graph up C units, okay? What's this called? It's called a uh, vertical translation, and uh, the same thing with f of x minus c. That moves the graph down. That is also called a vertical translation. Okay, next we have x plus a number in the parentheses and x minus a number in the parentheses. x plus a number, or c, x plus c, actually moves the graph left. It's the opposite of what you would think. And minus c moves the graph to the right. And that's called a horizontal translation. Remember, translate just means slide. You're sliding the graph up or sliding it down or sliding it left or sliding it right. Translation just means slide. y equals negative f of x. If there's a negative in front of the whole thing, if there's a negative in front of the whole function, it's going to flip it upside down. In other words, it's going to flip it over the x-axis. Now, if our negative sign is inside the parentheses, it's going to flip it over the y-axis, also called a reflection. So, flipping it over the y-axis kind of flips it sideways. Flipping it over the x-axis flips it upside down. Flipping it over the y-axis flips it to the other side. All right, and finally, y equals c times f of x, c being greater than zero. That means if you multiply your function by a positive number, by a number bigger than one, for example, three times f of x, it's going to make your graph taller and skinnier. We call this stretching the graph. And the last one is y equals c times f of x again, but this time c is between zero and one. That means it's a fraction. For example, y equals one-fourth f of x. This is going to make your graph wider. It's almost like you squashed it down so it's wider and fatter. We call this compressing the graph. All right, that's it for that.